We've just returned from the inaugural cruise of the new Margaritaville at Sea Paradise and want to share the entire ship with you as we go deck by deck in this exclusive cruise ship tour up next. Welcome on Bora Cruisers, I'm DB from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you see the world one port at a time. Now while Margaritaville at Sea is a new cruise line, technically its first ship, Margaritaville at Sea Paradise, is over 30 years old. So in this ship tour, we're going to take you deck by deck exploring all the public venues so you can see exactly what's been refurbed on the ship and what hasn't. Of course, if you have questions at all, please leave them in the comment section below and we'll be happy to answer them. And like we do for all our ship tours, we're going to start at the very top of the ship and work our way down deck by deck exploring the entire vessel. So we'll begin on deck 14, the nothing but a breeze deck. Now this deck contains only one venue at the very forward of the ship, the hangout. This venue felt rather like a hodgepodge space to us. Near the entrances of both sides, there are arcade games like skee ball, basketball, and air hockey. Then all the way forward is a small dance floor and a DJ booth, hosting the late night dance club. There is a bar in the venue, but during our cruise it never seemed to be open. This is one of the public spaces on Margaritaville at Sea Paradise that did not appear to get updated during the refurbishment. Now, like a lot of cruise ships, there is no Deck 13. So the next deck is Deck 12, Banana Inn. Here, you'll find your traditional sun deck, though the deck plans actually label it as a jogging track. Here, you'll find loungers and a quiet space all the way forward. There are also additional loungers midship overlooking the pool deck on both the port side and starboard side. The odd thing about this deck is that there is actually AstroTurf flooring. Now this is not ideal for a jogging track, especially since it tends to be wet and soggy in the mornings or can stay wet for quite a while after it rains. And this AstroTurf flooring is one thing we wish the cruise line had gotten rid of during the update. Heading all the way aft on deck 12, there is a new addition to the ship, the 12 volt bar. This bar overlooks the adults only pool area, which is one deck below. During our sailing, this bar did not open until later in the afternoon. It also did not have a specialty drink menu. However, in a conversation we had with the Senior Director of Beverage Operations, he indicated that all bars on the cruise ship will eventually have their own signature cocktail menu. Heading down one deck to deck 11, you'll find the License to Chill deck. And this is your typical pool deck you find on every cruise ship. First, all the way forward, you'll find the Fins Up Fitness Center and the Saint Somewhere Spa and Salon. The fitness center featured newer looking cardio and weight training equipment. There was also an additional open room, presumably for fitness classes or activities like Pilates or yoga but none of that was occurring during the maiden voyage. Outside the gym, there's a small relaxation area for those awaiting spa treatments. While the spa area seemed small, there were several different treatment rooms on both the port and starboard side of this area.
on the starboard side of the area, the salon has its own dedicated space with areas for hair services, manicures, pedicures, and more. Heading outdoors, you'll notice that the License to Chill pool area was not updated much during the rebranding. There is a partially covered area and shaded areas featuring some older day beds. Encircling the deck, there are also several loungers as well as tables and chairs for those looking to relax outside. The port side of this deck is considered the smoking section. The main central pool is rather small and looks like it could use some updating as well. Heading further aft on the starboard side is the Jolly Mons Kids Club. During our cruise, this area was not open, but it appeared to be a small room, similar to some of the other kids' areas throughout the ship. Right now, it just consisted of a sign placed on a locked door. Now in the partially covered area of the starboard side, there were several games, like cornhole and ping pong tables. But these appeared to be open to everyone, not just kids. Heading aft from the pool on the port side is a licensed to chill bar. Basically, it looks like the former pool bar with a new name and new sign. Although there was no signature menu yet, you could still order up your favorite frozen drinks, margaritas, and other Caribbean cocktails. Continuing further aft, past the omnipresent trash smell, you'll reach the 12 volt pool. The aft located pool area is adults only. It consists of another rather small pool. With several tiered loungers surrounding it. This open aft sun deck has a few umbrellas, but those are hard to come by. Finally on this deck, all the way aft, there were two hot tubs, which seemed rather small as well. Forward on deck 10, the five o'clock somewhere deck are suites. These 10 rooms are the only state rooms on the entire ship that offer a balcony. The remaining cabins are either interior or ocean view staterooms on the remaining decks. Continuing aft, there is a small teens club outside the buffet. Now we were able to break into this room and the small room appeared more ready than the other kids areas, but still lacked much theming. There was some furniture and what looked like new carpeting, but that was about it. Aft on deck 10 is the Port of Indecision Buffet. It was open for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. In fact, the buffet is the only complimentary option available for breakfast and lunch. The breakfast selections were on par with other cruise lines, offering things like eggs, as well as a custom omelet station, a selection of breakfast meats, pancakes, waffles, and other continental items. And yes, the omelet did pass the wife's test However, we were not big fans of the lunch. For lunch, there was a salad bar, a pasta bar, and a small selection of warm entrees, which include hamburgers and hot dogs.
the Port of Indecision buffet has indoor seating on both the port side and starboard side, though it can get crowded at peak times. So if you're like us and can't find a seat inside and prefer to eat outdoors, there's additional seating just aft at the five o'clock somewhere bar and grill. All the way aft on deck 10, the five o'clock somewhere bar and grill is a perfectly situated and rebranded venue all the way aft on deck 10. This vibrant spot is exactly what you expect from the Margaritaville brand. With colorful seating, great aft views, and a fully stocked bar, this is a great spot day or night. It actually would be the perfect spot for some live acoustic music in the evenings, which according to the Daily was supposed to occur during the inaugural cruise, but never happened. Now there is also a grill here along with the bar. During our sailing, the grill opened late afternoons through the evenings. The current menu when we were on board included burgers, tacos, chicken wings, and more snacks, but all the items were in upcharge, and the menu had a la carte pricing. Honestly, it was a bit pricey for a cruise line, and more on par with what you'd expect to find at a Margaritaville land-based restaurant in terms of cost. We really would have thought this venue would be complimentary, or at least include some free options on the ship. Given the short duration of our cruise, we did not have time to dine here. And like some of the other venues on the ship, it's rather unfortunate that all the signature Margaritaville dining options were upcharges. All the way forward on deck nine, the Love and Luck deck is the upper level of the Stars on the Water Theater. While there is an entrance on this level, the main entrance is on deck eight. So we'll talk about the theater in a little bit. Heading aft on deck nine is the retail area. First, you'll find the photo shop. Now, presumably this is a holdover from the Grand Classica as it's a very large photo area for a ship of this size. And during our cruise, there was only one or two photographers taking a limited number of photos. Opposite the photo shop was a duty-free store, selling typical products like alcohol and cigarettes. This shopping area has an upscale feel, akin to what you might expect to find at a Margaritaville resort. It features a variety of stores selling everything from shoes, to Margaritaville Reserve Clothing, and your typical logo shop, which actually had some pretty nice t-shirts and other merchandise. Next up on the port side of Deck 9 is the Margaritaville Coffee Shop. This upcharge venue featured a menu of espresso-based beverages like lattes and cappuccinos, as well as ice cream and small pastry items. As you would expect, the coffee drinks will cost you extra, but the prices were on par with other cruise lines for similar beverages. The ice cream was priced at $3.95, and the pastries, which look similar to items that would be complimentary on other cruise lines, were actually an upcharge and cost $5 a piece. What surprised us even more during the inaugural cruise was that the coffee shop was not open in the morning to get coffee. You could still get espresso drinks from the Euphoria Lounge, one deck below, but the coffee shop didn't open till 3 p.m. or later each day of our cruise. Across the way on the starboard side is Frank and Lola's Pizzeria. This casual pizza shop is another upcharge venue. The menu features 14 inch pizzas 
that were priced between $12.99 and $16.99. Surprisingly, you could not order pizzas by the slice. And honestly, we really think that pizza should be included in the cruise fare. Almost every major cruise line has a casual pizza spot that is not an upcharge. According to Margaritaville reps, the menu will actually be expanding soon to include sandwiches, salads, and other items. However, those will also most likely be an upcharge. You can choose to dine at Frank and Lola's or get your pizzas to go. If you dine at the restaurant, your pizza may actually be delivered by a robot. During our cruise, unfortunately the venue was not open during a traditional lunchtime. We actually waited until 3 p.m. for a very late lunch in order to test out the pizza during the second day of our voyage. Continuing further aft on deck nine, you will find the Paradise Casino. While there are hints of Margaritaville on the table covers and quotes on the wall, the casino doesn't look like it got much of an update. The slot machines look very dated, and the venue actually feels pretty empty given the size of the room. The last venue all the way aft on deck 9 is the Oasis Room, which actually is also a pretty dated room as well. This aft venue features a bar and lounge style seating. During our sailing, it hosted karaoke, dance classes, a piano performer, and a musical duo. We did enjoy the charisma of the piano performer in the evenings. Heading down deck 8 to the stars on the water deck. All the way forward, you'll find the entrance to the aptly named Stars on the Water Theater. Outside the theater, there's a small lounge space with a bar to grab a pre-show cocktail. There's a piano located here as well, but there was not any live music during our sailing. Now, the Stars on the Water Theater has been rebranded for the new signature production show, Tales from Margaritaville, Jimmy's Ship Show. The stage set, along with the talented cast, make for a great addition to the ship. This high energy and interactive show is comparable to production shows that you'll find on any other cruise line. This 45 minute production occurred each evening of our cruise at 7.45 p.m. Even though we're not huge fans of Jimmy Buffett music, we still really enjoyed the show. This is exactly what we would expect to find on a Margaritaville ship. Exiting the theater, there is the Parakeets Kids Club on the port side. Well. There's a door with an appropriate sign. Apparently, the room is being used for storage currently. Whoops. More centrally located, there is the Compass Rose Conference Center, which includes one rather good-sized meeting room and several smaller adjacent meeting rooms on the starboard side.
Continuing aft on deck eight, midship, you will find the Sentry Locade Euphoria Lounge, which is the heart of all the action. Here you will find a bar, a stage, and a large seating area. Even though this is a focal point of the ship, the venue is still more reminiscent of the former Grand Classica than it is of the Margaritaville brand. The Euphoria Lounge hosts live music by the house band in the evenings, as well as several other activities, like game shows, trivia, and other cruise events, such as Love and Marriage Show, Battle of the Sexes, and the adults-only scavenger hunt, The Quest, plus much more. We give credit where credit is due, and even though this cruise was just two days, the Fins Up crew fit it all in. The cruise director, Jeffy, and the assistant cruise director, Natasha, and the rest of the team brought high energy to all the popular cruise activities on this short cruise. Finally on deck eight all the way aft, you will find the two sit down dining venues. The JWB Prime Steakhouse is on the port side. This is an upcharge specialty restaurant, which costs $59 per person. The venue is actually a curtained off portion of the Finn's main dining room, but has more upscale furnishings and decor. For JWB Prime Steakhouse, reservations are required and do book up quickly. Currently, reservations can be made in the terminal prior to boarding the ship. The menu consists of prime cuts and seafood selections, along with a variety of appetizers and desserts. We dined here on the second night of our cruise and thought the food was much better than the main dining room. We sampled the fried oysters and deviled eggs, the filet mignon, key lime pie, and banana cream pie, along with several different side dishes. The wait staff here were personable, but the food did take quite a while, and our total dining time was over two hours. On the starboard side, you will find the larger Finn's main dining room. This is the complimentary sit-down restaurant on Margaritaville at Sea Paradise. The venue looks like a pretty typical main dining room on a cruise ship. The Finn's Dining Room offers your traditional early and late dining times of 6 o'clock and 8.30 p.m. The venue serves a different menu each evening that includes a beef, chicken, fish, pasta, and vegetarian entree option. There will also upcharge enhancements like a lobster tail. Our three course meal here was average at best. Since we were on the inaugural sailing, the service was slow, again, making our dinner over two hours. Hopefully with time and further training, efficiency will improve. Deck 7, the Riddles in the Sand deck, as well as Deck 6, the Flip Flop deck, are all staterooms. During our two-day inaugural cruise, we stayed in an Ocean View cabin on Deck 7, Cabin 7129, which is right next to the aft elevators and stairs. Given this is an old ship, there's not much in terms of soundproofing. So we could definitely hear the music in the Euphoria Lounge, which played until around midnight, as well as other passengers' rowdiness, which continued well past 2 a.m. So if you're the kind of person who goes to bed before midnight, we suggest you don't stay in a cabin near the stairwell. 
The staterooms on Margaritaville at Sea Paradise did receive extensive updates. They come complete with new bedding, new furniture, brand new televisions, and colorful accessories. Given this is only a two-day cruise, there's plenty of storage space with a combination of drawers and clothes bars in the closet. There's also a small desk and vanity area and a mini fridge. While our mini fridge looked new, it didn't appear to be working as our water bottles never got cold. While we've had heard complaints of the air conditioning and staterooms not working, ours did work. Do be aware that the electrical seems to remain from the former Costa Cruises days. So most outlets are 220 volt. Thus, you should bring a converter. Although the cruise line indicates you can also get converters while on board. Although near our bed, there was a USB outlet. The biggest disappointment in the stateroom was lack of updates to the bathroom. While the bathroom itself is on par with the size of a cruise ship bathroom, the shower is extremely small and has a shower curtain, making it very difficult to take a shower without getting the bathroom floor soaking wet. Also, the shower and toilet fixtures are in desperate need of replacement. The last deck with any public venues is deck 5, the changes and attitude deck. While this deck does consist mostly of staterooms, the midship area is a grand lobby where you can actually board the ship. Here you'll find the signature of Margarita Flip Flop, which is the perfect spot to take your welcome aboard selfie. There is also guest services and the shore excursions desk. Like any cruise line, guest services is where you can visit for any inquiries you might have. Even though Margaritaville at Sea only offers two-day cruises, guests can still book shore excursions for the Port Day in Freeport Grand Bahamas. Some of the options include all-inclusive beach breaks and swimming with the pigs. You can reserve these tours in the terminal prior to boarding the ship or at the shore excursions desk once on board. Finally, just off this main lobby, there is a chapel. This very tiny and rather antiquated space we can only imagine this venue is not used all that frequently. Finally, Deck 4, Coral, is the last passenger deck. This deck consists of all staterooms. Actually, this is a deck where we stayed on during the one day media sailing. However, this room was not complete at the time of our sailing. The television did not work, there was no wall art or decor, the room was covered in dust, lights were hanging out of the ceiling, and our toilet actually stopped working on disembarkation morning. Hopefully, this deck is in better shape now for current passenger sailings. And there you have it. That's our exclusive deck-by-deck deck comprehensive ship tour for the Margaritaville at Sea Paradise. Of course, we'd love to hear from you. Let us know in the comment section below if you plan on sailing on Margaritaville at Sea Paradise anytime soon. I'm DB from Eat Sleep Cruise, where we help you see the world one port at a time. And if you found this video informative, we have tons of other cruise ship tours and cruise review videos right here on our channel. If you're not sure where to start, you can take a look at our exclusive cruise review of Margaritaville at Sea Paradise. In that video, we provide in-depth analysis of several aspects of the cruise, from the dining to entertainment, onboard activities, and more to help you decide if Margaritaville at Sea Paradise is the right ship for your next cruise vacation.